Exercise 12. Now we're going to have fun with building a room, building depth, building height, building length with scaling and maybe some referencing too as well. We're going to build a room 12 feet tall by 12 feet deep by 12 feet long or 12 units if you're using a different measurements measuring system. Whatever you're using, whether it's centimeters or inches or half inches like I'm going to be using, just be consistent. Okay. In mind, just mind your paper size. I'm going to be using half inches to fit it on nice and comfortably. Okay, so we need to establish the first thing in our drawing, our center of vision and our eye line. So let's do that now. I'm going to put my eye line, excuse me, my eye line first. Excuse me, and I'm going to make it a little bit higher up the picture plane because we're going to be using a little bit uh, lower portion than higher. So it's a little bit off center, which is fine. Right in through there, I'll lay that line down, bring it all the way across with another ruler to get to show you the length all the way across there. And then my piece of paper horizontally is 24 inches in length, so I'm just going to put my center of vision right in the center. In half of 24 is 12, and I'll put a little dot there. That's also going to be our vanishing point later on. Okay, and so now I'll put that through all the way here and all the way down. Remember, I'm drawing much darker than I need to so it'll show up on camera. Draw very whisper light, very, very light. Okay, so now we have our center of vision up here. We have our eye line up here, which is also going to be, I'm gonna put HL, which is gonna be our, our, our horizon line. And then over here, I'm gonna put the elevation which is going to stand from our ground line to our eye line, our ELV will be seven units, okay? Or seven feet if you're working in feet like I am. Okay, so we have that established. Let me sharpen up just a little bit. Always sharpen often. Keep your pencils sharp and responsive you'll have a better drawing if you do. Okay, so we have that established. Now the next thing we want to establish is some scaling because we need to, since our elevation is seven units from the eye level, we need to go down seven units to establish uh, where that ground line is. And then I'm gonna go a little bit further to establish a station point so we can use that for our measuring point. So I'm using half inch units. Whatever you're using, be consistent and be mindful. If your units are too big, they may go off the page. So smaller sometimes is a little bit better or figure out uh, how many units you need to keep your entire drawing on your paper. So I'm gonna use half inch units here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's gonna be our ground line where the front of the room touches the floor. I'm just gonna draw a nice wide line out here, longer than I need just to overdraw a little bit. Now, I'm gonna keep going, and the reason why I wanna establish our station point, we're going to be six more units away from the room uh, down below for our two point station point. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is a total of 13 down. I'm going to put six here, units, and I'm going to put st st SP for station point. And then, of course, we'll draw our little person here, male or female, depending on your gender. There's our little st our station point, and then our head here, and then our little body. We're looking straight down on this person, right? Buttock back here, and then little feet sticking out, and we have it. So, total is 13. And this is important to establish in our station point because remember in the lecture how we see this is how we view through. We can flap this down for where we are or we can flap it up, 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 right connected to our center of vision looking into the composition, right? Looking into that becomes us as we're out here. We're 13 units looking into and we're six units from the front plane of the room that we're actually looking into. Okay, so now let's establish 
the uh, scaling now for our ground line here. Here's our ground line here. So we're saying this is zero now since it's our center of vision. Now I want it off center. We're 12 by 12 by 12. So let me write this down so we can all see it. So it's a room that's 12 units by 12 units by 12 units. Height, right, length, and also width. So we established that too. Okay, so now along our ground line, we can make a measuring line with scaling. And we're gonna make at about 10 on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I may not need that much, I know I won't, but I just wanted to show you how to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if we wanted the room to be equal spacing, we could both go six and six. Let's keep it off center a little bit. Let's just use four on this side. So one, two, three, four. Here's where the horizontal, excuse me, the vertical of my room I'll bring up here. I'll line this up and I'll bring that up here. And I'm just gonna send it up high for now. And then this starts back at zero. There's four units, so we need to go eight over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me let me mark that number that one two, three units, four, five, six units, seven, and eight's what we want right there. And so now I know where to bring a vertical up and up and higher, right? So now we're, we're uh, looking pretty good. Now what I want to do, we know this is already at seven, right? Right there, because we're at seven units elevation. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's already at seven. Let's go ahead and mark up one side of our room. You could do it right or left, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna start marking it up to 12. 12 units, because we want 12 units tall. 12 by 12 by 12. All right, half inches, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six. We've proved our elevation is at seven, right there. Then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. So let's mark that over here. So this is zero now. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where our eyes are locked in. Eight units, nine, 10 units, 11 units, 12 units. So let's bring a nice horizontal across where we're at 12, right? There, let me keep my head out of the way. There we are at 12, right there, bingo. And now we have a 12 by 12 room. So I'm gonna clean up my drawing just a little bit so I don't confuse anybody, right? Namely myself or anybody else. So I'll just clean up these lines. I just use my eraser shield as a budding device to help stencil that off. So now we're good to go. All right, so let's create um, a sense of depth already in our composition. So to do that really quickly, it's easy, right? You know how to do that. Let's just take the corners of our, of our room now and go back to our VP. Here's our VP. Our vanishing point is right there in one point. Okay, so let's create our depth. That's next here. This is what it's all about is creating that depth. Remember the intro to depth section you just got through not long ago, right there. Right there, and right there. Okay, so from each corner of the room, that corner goes back to our vanishing point. Remember, we're off center a little bit. Okay, so now we have that. So what do we need next? How do we get, how do we know how far and how deep we need for 12 units? Well, I'll show you, okay? So, <clears throat> We're going to create a measuring point. I'm gonna bring up my red pencil. And we need, we need that 45 degrees coming from our station point, right? So let's also demark where our cone is, but we're not gonna draw the big circle. 
Why not? Well, it gets in the way a little bit, but let's kind of understand where that cut is. So let's start out by using our 30, 60, 90. And let's use our 30 degree mark here. Okay, from our station point, you know how to do this now. We set up a little bit. The point is to do this over and over again so you see it, see it. Then later on, you don't even need it. You just know it's there. And when you, when you start seeing distortion, you're like, okay, I'm out of my kind of vision. So here's, this mark here is 30 degrees. That's the boundary of the right side of the cone. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing now over here. Or you can just measure how far that is. Or you could use a compass. And here's the other boundary. So we are just slightly, barely, barely right outside the cone here. So what? No big deal. Now, if we were way over, I would say we might have a little bit of a problem. Maybe we could move it over a little bit, but we're not. Now we need 45 degrees from our station point here, lining up along our center of vision to get our true measuring point for our perfect 45 degree box that we want, our angle of our box that we want, for one wall coming into the other wall, and we need it coming through us, ourselves, out to the eye line. So let me line that up through the center vision on the station point out here and where it touches, right here. Okay, boom, there is our measuring point. So I'll put measuring point, right? And that's, remember, 45 degrees, right in through there. And here is, I'll put our cone right through there. C is cone, and you can see it on the other side too as well. All right, so there we go now. Now, we need to figure out, so we've got 12 units across here, so we need to figure out how deep our room is going to be, right, at 12 units, because remember, we're 12 and 12. We've already got height, and we got uh, width, but we need length or depth. I should maybe change that to a D since I've been using depth. So I'll use make that a D just in case uh, that was confusing. I don't want to confuse. We want to illustrate and educate here and, and make things um, illuminated, right? I'm going to sharpen my red pencil. Take just a moment if you need to. There we go. Grab a cup of coffee. You can always stop me, go grab a cup of coffee. I'm going to grab a drink here. Okay, so how do we establish that? Well, we know that this is 12 units deep all the way across here. So we can come back and say from this point right here, where do we go? Well, we go right back to the measuring point right here. So from this corner, remember we did that with our cubes. Now we have a little bit more of a vision for using it. So not only am I giving you tools, but I want to show you start to, to how you use it and hopefully you can start taking off on more creative endeavors, endeavors too as well. So from the front corner of our room to the left here, and you could have done it to the, to the right if you wanted, but do it to the left, back to the measuring point. I'm going to draw a very light line, but right here is where I'm looking at it, where it bisects. I have to go all the way to here, right, to show you where it bisects, right there, right there, where it touches this convergence line going back. That is 12 units deep. So once we know that, once we have 12 units deep, then I can come along, bring my T-square over from this point horizontally over to there. 12 units deep. It doesn't have doesn't line up with these scaling lines. We're talking about depth now. Forget about that. So here's where I stop here. Okay, that's 12 units across too, because we already have it here. I'll show you that in a moment. And then we're gonna bring up, let me use my other ruler. Through it. Then we're gonna bring up the vertical. That's 12 units high. We know that already. We have our measurement here. Back in space, remember rule number one, going back to a vanishing point, vanishing point on a horizon line. Rule number one here, right? Perspective, see it all comes together. Perspective is easy. It's so easy and it's a creative tool. That's what I want to get across. These won't be the most popular videos I put out for YouTube students across the world. 
and that's okay. Everybody wants to, to kind of um, stay away from, from perspective, but the, the key of it is every time you draw, if you like drawing the figure, you're using perspective every single moment. That's what's so important. So for those of you that are really smart, you'll learn perspective backwards and forwards. All right, so we'll line these two up now. I'll keep my hand out of the way best I can. Be as accurate as I can. Right there is the ceiling, okay? So now we've established, we've drawn the inside of our box too. We've established a ceiling, a floor, a left wall, and a right wall. And they're all 12 feet by 12 feet by 12 feet here as well. Well, how do we know that? How do I know this is 12 units deep and not something else? How do I know for sure? All right, well, let's establish that a little bit. I think you'll be, you'll be surprised at how fun uh, this can be. So here's what we'll do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drive our scaling here along the bottom. I'm going to bring the camera in now so we can get a little closer together. We can see this a little better. Now we've established everything. Bring this in some even further. I think that'll be okay. How about to right there? So you can really start to see it now. And let's, the first thing we want to do is bring all of these scaling points. These are units of measurement. They will look like a tile floor. If you wanted to do a tile floor, that's in one point, then that'll be set for you. But something else to think about is this is going to be scaling that's going to be like grid lines in depth for you to reference and scale figures, furniture, when you need to really be accurate. Not only the aesthetic look of it, that's one thing. Just getting the look of it is cool, and that's what mostly what we do with perspective. But when you need the scaling to be accurate to your station point out here right looking in and what are those distances between a chair and between a bed those kinds of things you'll need that you may need that at some point time in two time two as well all right so from our units here we'll go back to the vanishing point now i'm going to shorthand i'm not going to draw a line all the way through just where it ends at the back of the room there okay and then there we're always going back to our vanishing point for our depth there and we're aligned there, okay? Then there. Then this one at two. Just make sure you, you, you keep a, a very sharp pencil. The sharper, the better. Again, I create these bigger dots so that you can see them. If I was drawing it, I would draw a dot very, very tiny because that way it gives me more accuracy to, to be on a 16th of an inch. If you can get to a 32nd, that's about pretty good with these pencils, any pencil. 64th is really hard. You have to be really, really anal, but that's cool too. I'm all for accuracy, however you have to get it. Now look what we did. So we created measurement marks. They look like slats, and that's cool too. So what they are is they're one unit wide, right, by 12 units deep. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so we've got that. Now we can do the same thing over here uh, uh, depth-wise from this left wall going back to the vanishing point. So let's do that now too as well. We can create measurements. And I'm going to show you why that's important. So I line up my T-square to each measurement without getting my head too far in the way. I've got my head way over to the right. It's an interesting way to draw. So you can see, there we go. And there we're at seven units. Remember her cone is right there, so we're a little bit outside the cone, but not far enough to make too much of a difference. There's six, then there's five here, then there's four here, then there's three, okay, then two, Right, and then one unit right there, okay. And then, of course, we've got the, the ground plane here. Let me draw that a little bit darker where the, the ground meets the wall right there. Okay, so you can see that. All right, big deal. Now, wait a minute. Now, what do we do about depth? How do we handle that? So this is probably the newer trick for you. Okay, so we're going to use reference points now back to our, 
our reference point there and we're going to create them going back from our each unit of scaling right back to the measuring point so at seven here and then we're going to de demarcate them note where they are by a little nice marker tick right along the corner of our box here make sure we can really see I'm going to come in a little bit deeper even further so you can see that even better alright so now from seven I'll make a mark in okay there we go line it up nicely and so remember they go all the way across but I'm just going to draw right through here there's a mark Okay, I line up my measuring point. Each time we make a mark in depth, this is a measuring point for a unit of measurement. Here, line up at five, right there, there's the marks. Make sure you can see them right here. You've got to be pretty accurate. Okay, five, four. Make sure I got this right. And if you're doing the right, they're going to get a little wider as they come towards us, right there. Then at three, right there, okay. Then at two, right there, okay. Then at one, okay, right there. Then at the zero mark, which could be nine or eight. We just need 12 units, right? There, and then the next one, one. to there, then the two mark, over, then it's the three mark, okay, over, all right, and then the, the, we get now to the front of the room. Now, from those points, and I'm going to do this one in red so you can see them, now we draw horizontally back across the floor, across, just like so, stop where it meets the, the ground line for a floor to the wall. These are now equally spaced squares and units of measurement to place objects in composition. Right where that meets, all the way over, stop. Right where that meets, all the way over, stop right where that meets all the way over stop okay you get the idea right where that meets all the way over stop and we keep going there there okay there and there and we keep going just takes diligence there and we've got one more there, I believe. Okay, I think I didn't miss any. So let's count those to make sure we're right, right? So we've got 12 units of measurements high with our height and our length. Well, what about our depth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How about that? Now we've got 12 units of measurement deep in our composition. And so now we can scale and or we can reference anything we want to put in that room with confidence. This is an accurate representational portrayal of a 12 unit, 12 foot, 12 meters, whatever it is you want. Now, since I don't know meters to people's heights, I'd have to be, I'd have to be careful since I'm on the um, inches, the old English or the English system what we call here in the United States. We are always behind, it seems, in that, in that sense. And currently we are behind in other ways, but um, the international students will know what I mean by that for sure. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you is to bring these units of measurement, yep, you guess it, on up vertically. So let's do that so we have measurements on the wall. Now you could do this all the way across even in the back wall, that might get to be a little too much. You don't need as much. What you do is you need enough so you can get your placements. I'm going to just use the left wall and the floor. So we just line up each point and we'll bring them up vertically and stop where they meet 
the the wall here okay it's pretty easy and I'm just going to continue on there okay and there and I'm just going to keep going okay and there and we'll have 12 units all the way through to the back of the wall just make sure you're accurate be careful about lining up your ruler it takes a slow hand and steady notice how they get narrower and closer together too as well so you can see let's find where the center of the room is do you know where it's at six it's at six wide it should be six deep right one two or twelve it should be six one two three four five six right there is the middle of the room so you could bring that over and demarcate that right there there's the middle too as well so if we're at one two three four five six there's our true center now even though we're off center from our center of vision remember this is where our, our center of our forehead is and this is our eye line remember we bring that together so now since the room is a little bit uh, moved over, we're not tilting our head, it's just moved over a little bit. So this is our center here, lengthwise. Let's go depthwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, do you see this little light line coming through? Remember our centering X? That also proves how that works. There's six there, six units, and I bet if we drew a diagonal from here over, we would get pretty close to it if not right on it depending upon my pencil length and yep sure enough look at that right there there's our center centering X so that just again to prove how that all that works in perspective this should, hopefully if you're learning this for the first time hopefully your mind is a little bit blown or you're getting a giddy exciting feeling in your mind thinking oh my goodness I'm learning something I can apply creatively to whatever it is I want to draw. If you're a 3D animator or if you are a illustration person or fine art person using representational techniques or even semi-abstract techniques, you're, you can apply this everywhere. You can't escape perspective. It's how we see and then it was only through our historical movements as we obliterated that for new visual languages did we distort uh, as we as per needed for the aesthetic that we wanted okay so now we're good to go here now the next step is in our room let's put now some let's put a couple of boxes I think box number one is going to um, look like uh, a bookshelf on the wall over here so we'll do box number one I'm gonna write down the units over here so we'll put two boxes and two rugs okay so box one I'll put over here so make sure I can see that no I can't see that in the camera that's what I thought okay good to know so let me erase that out I won't even edit it out so I don't want to cut out my audience you don't know what we're drawing okay so let's put it over here there we go now I can see pay attention how about that so box number one that's going to be, let's see, I wanted to have my notes. Okay, two units wide by nine units tall, okay, and it's going to be six units deep, okay? So deep, deep in through here. All right, so let's, let's figure this out. Where are we going to place this? on our composition and it's going to be one unit deep from the ground line wall out away from us so that's the first thing we want to look at so let's take a look at that so if it's one unit away then we're talking about putting it on this line right yep okay so it's two units wide so it's on the wall and it's two units wide so one 
two. So there's where it's going to be right there. It's like plotting out in graph line. So there we're going to put a little demarcation. We've got it. Now it's going to be nine or six units deep. I think is better to go now. So six units deep. So one, two, three, four, five, six units deep. Right there, I'll put a little mark, a little dot, and then we'll trace over that for six units deep. Right there. Now I'm going to strengthen it in so you'll see it. Now we can come across here, and the only measurement we need now is our nine units tall. How do we do that? Easy peasy. Since we're against the wall here, now we'll start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is our eye line. That's our elevation. Seven, eight, nine units right there in perspective. So let's demarcate that since it's a bookshelf on the wall by a little stronger, darker line so you can see it. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this corner, front corner of our box up here, up, 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 up. Get close to where it's going to come across. Right. And now we bring horizontally, we bring our bookshelf, our box over, line it up to our height line. And there we go, right there. So there's the height of our box in our front quarter. Now we need the depth of the box going back to the vanishing point. Okay. So this one already does it for us. We don't need that. We, we already have it on the ground. So let's do it from this corner. Let's go back to the vanishing point here. We've got that coming over. Okay. So now we're at six units deep. One, two, three, four, five, six. So from this back corner of our box, here we go up, up, up until we meet the convergence line or diminishment line right there. Okay. And now all we have to do is trace over here to make it darker so you can see it right there. Bingo. Bingo, and there we go. Now let's draw the inside of it so we can see that too. Since it's on the wall, this line coming across, can you see it going back to the vanishing point, gives our diminishment at nine feet. So from this point, we just go back to this line here, right till there. We stop one, two units over, and that will line us up in the back. You can see how it already does with the red line. And there's our shelf coming through. All right. So now we know that we have, in perspective, we have a box, or we can say also known as shelf, bookshelf. Um, let me write bookshelf just so we'll have it, right? Bookshelf. Number one, that's two units wide, right? We got that nine units tall. We see that in six units deep. It's against the wall and it's one unit off of our ground line. So we're good to go there. We've got that one. Now let's go for box number two. And I'll put that over here. Okay. Make sure we see it. You can barely see it. I'll have to make sure we get the right notes. You can see everything. Don't want you not seeing it. Box number two is going to be, let's see, two units wide by three and a half units tall, okay, and we're going to make it three units deep, okay. So two by three and a half by three, sharpen your pencils, keep them sharp, right, and then we're going to say that it's going to be pulled over two units from the center. Okay. I think that's what I have in my notes. Make sure that I have it. Two units from the center. Yeah. And then I'll show you that. And then it's going to be three units deep from the ground line. All right. So let's locate that first. Here's what I mean by that. So it's two units off of the center. So here's our center. I'll put a C for the center too as well. You can see that. 
So it's going to be two units, one, two, which is truly the center of our form or our, or our ground. So that's what I meant by that off of our center of vision. CV. So one, two, right there. And then it's going to be, uh, I put three units deep to start. So one, two, and then one, two, three. So there's our starting point right there. Bingo. Okay. Now we're going to make it two units wide. So that means from here we're going to make one, two units wide. Okay. So I'm going to draw and strengthen that line up so that you see it two units wide. Okay. And then we've got three and a half units tall. Okay. So that might confuse you a little bit. So how do we get that accurate? What if I just draw it up and just guess at it? You don't have to guess. Right. So come along here and say, all right, here's where we start. So we need to go up one, two, three units, and then a half is right there. So I'm going to start from that line and just draw a construction line over. And then I'm going to bring over my ruler, my T-square, and my triangle, bring that up to that line where I drew over right there. And the same thing right here. So that's three and one half units tall. So we're at two units. We're at two units by, and you can check that over here, one, two, three and a half right into there. And you could draw, you could take half of that to measure and go back to the vanishing point to find that too as well. Okay, now how many units deep are we? All right, so we're at three units deep over here, so we need three units deep. How do we figure that out? Well, right along here or on, on this side if you want, one unit, two unit, three units deep right there. See, we're two units wide, so that gets us right where I made that center line right through there. That's There is our bottom plane. Let me strengthen that up a little bit, darken it so you can see it. Right there and there, right there and there. This goes faster and faster if you do it. You can set this up because you're not talking and drawing and instructing. It can go even faster. Now we need depth projections from our front corners here back to our vanishing point here and there. And let's do the bottom. Our bottom is done for, for us by the floor. So that works pretty well. So we have that and we have that one. Now all we need to do is bring up our height of our box to the back here to here. We stop right along there. Right there's where it ends in perspective. We still get a lot of space back here to deal with if we wanted to. And then of course we just bring it, bring it over right in through there and where they touch. That is the end of our box, the back uh, left. And then of course we bring it down here in the back. And there is our box number two, which is two feet or two units over from our center of our center of vision here. And then three, one, two, three units deep. It's two units wide by three and a half units tall. And it's three units deep. And now you know it truly works in perspective. Now remember, we are six units looking in from the front of the room looking up and in over at an elevation of seven feet. So we're either seven foot tall or we're on a stool. Since most of us are not seven units tall, depending upon how big your units are, we're probably standing up on something looking into that, that box as well. So we've got a little extra height, unless you're a really tall you know, person, you play basketball, or you're just a very, very tall, tall person. Okay. Now let's put a rug down on um, in our composition. So let me put the measurements for the rug over here so you can, you can see that. And so rug number one, and that's going to be just a simple plane. Rug number one is going to be, we're going to start at the center, and we're going to go one unit in, and then it's going to be three units wide. So we're going to put three units wide by, what did I put here? Three units wide by one, two, let's see, rug 
Number one, by five units deep. I want to make sure I get my notes right. By five units deep. So it's three by five. So let's restart that. So it's one unit in, and we're going to start right on our center of vision. So I'm going to make a mark right there. So just one unit in. It's three units wide. One, two, three. Okay, well, let's make a stronger line so we can see that. Okay, and now it's five units deep. So we have one, two, three, four, and five units right there, and it lines up on our center of vision. So we could just darken this in like so, and then darken this line over like so, and then our back line where our rug ends, that's our rug right in through there. So I'm going to darken that rug in a little bit so you can see it. And we've got more rug to do, uh, to draw, and it's going to be a little bit of a special rug, meaning that it's going to be a little different than anything else uh, in our composition thus far. Okay. Now, the trick of this, you know, later on, you can go much more detailed into this. We can do things like that later. We're just getting a basic approach for it. So there's rug number one. Now, rug number two is going to be interesting in that it is going to be... Uh, it's going to have a uh, two-point be in two-point perspective. So we're going to put two-point perspective, and we need it to be at 90 degrees. Well, how in the world to, do we do that? And I'm not going to talk about the measurement of it because it's in two-point. Now, what we need then is we need, and what I'm going to establish is the first angle of our rug coming out. So I want to pick a place where I want. I want it to be catty corner and I want it to still stay in the room. So I want it to be maybe about right here. I'm going to put a dot here. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw an angle I like. And I'm going to put this angle about right here. And I'm going to shoot it across till it lands on our horizon line. Okay. So you can still see that in the camera. That's good. Okay. So that's my left vanishing point. All right. But now I need, since rugs are a plan vision of rugs, they are, they are just simple rectangles. I'm going to need a 45 degree angle coming from the left vanishing point to us, then back out again at 45 to find the angle for our rug out here. And it's going to be something probably like I'm guessing, since I know this, it's going to be something like this. Let's see what it does. All right, so I take my ruler, excuse me, not my ruler. I take my trusty 45 degree angled triangle. Now from the left vanishing point to our station point, okay? Well, I need my 45 coming out. Let me line that up, make sure I get that coming out. And through here, so we're going to draw a line, excuse me, through here, through our station point. Make sure you get that. I, I kind of screwed that up a little bit. What, what you need first is, is it just a line from your left finishing point to your station point. I was thinking ahead there. Sorry about that. Now, now we need 45 degrees, sorry, from your station point lined up with your line coming through. Now, it's going to be different from this measuring point. That's important. So, to, to determine. So from the end of your station point, where your left vanishing point is, nice. Coming through here, our new right vanishing point for our rug is right here. Right there. So I'm going to put a little arrow further out where it by where it touches that. That's our dot, but this is this is our rug right vanishing point for rug number two. Now we have our vanishing point. So here's our left vanishing point. Here's our right vanishing point for our rug, right? And so now I line up the corner of my rug to my right vanishing point. We'll draw a line, diminishment line. I want to keep it all in the room, so I'll end it right here, okay? I want to keep it in the room on the other side, right in through here, so I'll make it smaller on this side about right but this dimension, maybe a unit and a half 
or so. Okay, now it's all aesthetic. I can have fun with it. Now, from this corner, we go back to the right vanishing point. Okay, I'll draw a diminishment line through. And then from this, here's where our rug ends, back to the left vanishing point. And where they meet right here, that's our little two-point perspective rug. Sitting down nice and comfortable in our room. But what do you notice that's different about it? Well, it is at a right angle in two-point perspective. And so let me, I'll color that in now in red so you can see rug number two. So we kept it in the room, and of course it's smaller than, than our other rug. Well, if we brought it forward, it would get a little bit bigger, but what do you notice about it? It's at a very different angle. All right, so, and of course we used, we found the angle that we wanted, and that was totally just an arbitrary decision, meaning that if I wanted it to be more out this way, that would bring this, this right vanishing point probably up higher. If I wanted it to be more this way, that would bring the right vanishing point out this way. What, you're, what we really were saying, once we determine this angle, we locate, of course you could do it the opposite way. But since we're doing it this way, once you locate this angle, what we're really saying, this red line out and from the station point, which is 90 degrees from us, right? That's going to change depending upon your aesthetic of what you wanted. Okay, that's important. Here it won't because we're locked in our center vision to our vanishing point. That's going to be fun to play with uh, in the coming lessons later on about... Um, your where to set in your vanishing points. And then later on, when you're observing and you're drawing in relaxed perspective, you just draw it and sketch it and you, you estimate to a very high level of good aesthetic estimation to get accurate drawings without having to draw all of this out. That's the point. The point is to learn this, to break this down into intellectual components so that you can put it back together again in an aesthetic way that's stronger, that's richer, and then that's also quicker without having to do this. But sometimes you need this depending upon a project and how you want to manipulate space. So we're learning it backwards and forwards, breaking it down, putting it back together, relaxing it, going to simple form perspective, which is somewhere in between, and then going to full perspective, formal perspective when you need it to as well. So there you go. There's our 12 unit by 12 unit by 12 unit room. We put two different boxes in. We had scaling and we didn't really reference. We could if we wanted to, if we wanted to put a figure in reference, but that's for next time. Then we put a rug in and then we put a two point rug in by getting aesthetic angle that we wanted with the left vanishing point coming out to the station point, 90 degrees back out, right? So we can get our other vanishing point for our rug. And then we've got it locked in. It's sitting down flat on our one point room. All right, now we'll go on to lesson number 13. And for lesson number 13, let me get my notes. We've got three more lessons. We're gonna do a room that's gonna be 15 by 13 by 17 with a nine foot elevation and we're gonna put three figures. They're all gonna be six foot tall and we're gonna put two hatches. We're gonna use rule number three and four as well as rule number one and two in perspective. All right, stay tuned. I'll see you uh, soon now for exercise 13. Peace, bye-bye.